It is impossible to not get fired up over Brewer baseball after what we saw this weekend. We'll get to that coming up next. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One thing we're always going to be told of baseball, one way or another, April baseball, March baseball. I keep thinking this is April baseball, but it's really still March baseball until Monday. Um, Then it's early. Oh, it's early in the season. It's early in the season. You hear that all the time. And yeah, we've we've been down that road with the Milwaukee Brewers before. Fast starts before. 20 and 3. 14 and 3. We've had we've had great starts, 12 and 0, obviously. Um, there's been great starts that have ended in failure. But you know what? Can't temper my enthusiasm about the way things went for the Milwaukee Brewers this this weekend. Going into New York and getting a three-game sweep against the Mets. David Stern, I don't, I don't know what kind of team you put together there, but my gosh, Brewers rolled these games. Was there, were any of these games really in question? Even Saturday, uh, you know, was seven to six, but still, you always felt that the Brewers were firmly in the driver's seat. Milner gives that, that up that home run in the eighth inning, but I was I was never worried. Uribe gives up a blast in the ninth, and. Um, uh, it's Alonzo. No, never was concerned. They rolled through all three of these games in New York. An impressive start. Now, am, am I ready to cash my 76 and a half wins over yet just yet? No, not yet. But still, a lot to love about Murphy Ball that we saw. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Get us on Google, Spotify, Apple. We're on all the major downloads where you can download a podcast where you download your audio podcast we are there go there and find us locked on brewers we're the number one brewers podcast on the internet because of you great fans out there and please go to youtube search locked on brewers hit the subscribe button hit the bell that alerts you every time we drop an episode here on locked on brewers part of the locked on podcast network we are your team every day And, of course, follow me on Twitter, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. I I comment during games all the time. I'll be covering games, uh, these couple games coming up here this week with the Brewers and Twins. Uh, So looking forward and always looking forward to, um, you know, our banter with Brewer fans out there. I love it. Um, Yeah, I'm just so fired up. You know, came home on an Easter Sunday. We went out to eat and, uh, you know, kicked back and was going to watch Brewers baseball. And, man, what an enjoyable game. I mean, running the bases, the pitching. I mean, there's so much to like about this team. Yeah, you look at it, and they only put up four runs, and they put up three runs on Friday, seven on Saturday, but I feel like they've they scored like in every other inning that they played. I feel like there was always guys on the pond, ducks on the pond, always guys. The Brewers, I felt, even though, yeah, four runs today, three on Friday, I just felt there was more life than that. It just felt like it. Um, this didn't, it didn't seem like your typical four to one or three, one game on Friday. I just feel like the Brewers always were in action moving up. I just felt there was a lot more life on this team. And I know some of y'all taking shots at great counsel because they're one and two and the Brewers are three and oh, I get it. But I just feel with Murphy initially through three games, and I've seen these things go south before, but I think initially I feel like. Running the bases is a priority on this team. I mean, a guy gets on base, he's taken off. Bryce Terang, four stolen bases this weekend. That set a Brewer rec- a record for most stolen bases through three games. Four stolen bases in addition to his five hits. You know, just not sitting around waiting for a three-run home run. Action on the base pass. I like that. I've been calling for that for years. And again, it, it seemed like the Brewers scored a heck of a lot more runs than that but because there was always threats on the bases, always threats. And uh, yeah, did they leave some situations like Hoskins bouncing into a double play today? And also they left the bases loaded in another inning after um, RBI single by Dunn. I believe that was in the fifth inning. They surrounded the bases loaded there. But still, very, very cool. For I would have taken two or three in New York. I would have taken, if they would have went to New York, you would have told me last Friday, 
Uh, frames, they're going to win two or three in New York against Mets. Taken. I'm on board. The Brewers were underdogs in all three of those games, even like today. But they won the first two games. Like they were like a plus 130 underdog. Jump on the Brewers. Really? They're the better team. Like I said, I don't know what Stern, David Stearns is putting together over there, but the Brewers, at least I know they're better than the Mets. And I feel like after spinning around the dial this weekend, watching a little of the Cardinals, Dodgers, and watching some of the Cubs and Rangers, and, you know, the Pirates played some, they're, and the Pirates are going to draw some excitement. But as we all know, the Pirates are destined for last place. Well, maybe not this year. Who knows? But the Pirates, I feel like they we see this every so often with them. And, and, you know, the Reds, I believe the Reds got beat on Sunday. But still, the Brewers don't have to take a back seat against any of those teams. Just the lineup that they put out there. I like Oliver Dunn at third base. We haven't talked a heck of a lot about him. But, man, he made some, a 26-year-old rookie over there. Big, big hit in the uh, in the fifth inning. But, yeah, love to lot to like about this series sweep with the Milwaukee Brewers. All right. We come back. Uh, we'll talk about some individuals who really stood out for the Brewers this weekend. Obviously, Jackson Churio fits right in. The bullpen looking ahead to the twin series. All that coming up here. Locked on Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Can you tell that I'm fired up here on a Sunday night? Darn right I am. Getting ready, getting into the season. It's been a long off season, long spring training. And here we are. Three and oh. Three and oh. FanDuel is in America's number one sports book for a reason. FanDuel, uh, take advantage of it. The sports calendar is loaded these days with basketball and, you know, the college basketball. Final four coming up this weekend. Hope you all are riding NC State. Man, they've covered seven games in a row. The sports calendar is loaded, but but right now new customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. 200 bucks. You could use that money to uh, bet on the tournament, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, all that. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on, L O C K E D O N. Make your first bet a big win. But again, you get that $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel is America's number one sports book for a reason because they offer bonuses like this. And you know what? They got props and all that, a lot of integrity. And it's the, the system is really easy to use. Really easy. You know, there's no BS there allowed. So you're a new customer. Again, $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. The NBA is going on as well. In Major League Baseball, there'll be a lot of day baseball. You know, if you're at work, you know, you just want to have something going on there. So get some, you know, some of these openers are starting this week, like the Brewers on, on Tuesday. Get down with FanBook, FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Also, I want to tell you about LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on this, and now they can't. In recent years, they've come out with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I know a buddy of mine uses this at his sales job at a radio station down in Milwaukee. Are you struggling to close deals? Uh, B2B selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Uh, it's a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator uh, helps you target the right buyers, uh, key signals such as job sale uh, changes, or which accounts you should prioritize. Uh, it shows you all the hidden allies, so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock your conversations with the people that matter most. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator, get a 60-day free trial, linkedin.com slash locked on, linkedin.com slash locked on, a 60-day free trial. LinkedIn Sales Navigator helps sell like a superstar today. Go to linkedin.com slash locked on, to get started today, Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are coming right back. Welcome back to Locked On Brewers. Somebody tweeted at me. Oh, I think I saw the comment. It was on YouTube earlier. Say, hey, Chuck, you got to keep the beard going until they lose. I was actually I was going to shave it earlier today on Easter, but I was like, I'll keep the thing going. So I at least got a couple more days, and who knows how long this is going to last. Who knows? You know, the Brewers have 
Um, gotten off the great starts before, but hey, gladly, gladly get get it done and uh, and keep the beard going here. If you're watching us on YouTube, by the way, if you're on YouTube watching us, hit the subscribe button. Looking to go over three thousand subs and to keep it going, four thousand, five thousand. You want to keep this thing going? I really love the way that we've uh, increased the um, the the fan base on YouTube, and I just want to keep it going here over the next um, several months. All right, here we go. Um, Hoskins went three for 11. I think that was a very loud three for 11. He walked a couple of times. Yeah. He did bounce out with the, with the bases loaded, you know, a little dribbler in front of the plate, but he homered on Saturday, RBI single showed some toughness on this team, made a great play at third at, at first base defensively. And, uh, you know, that whole drama this weekend where Hoskins, I think that was the talk of the weekend among Brewer fans about, Reese Hoskins nearly getting, well, the ball went sailing over his head. Um, but the pitcher who did that for the Mets got a three-game suspension. Their manager, um, he got suspended for today's game. But you knew that was coming, and I thought that was the end of it. Somebody asked me today when I was out for uh, for lunch earlier before the game, do I think there's going to be retaliation by the Brewers to throw at somebody? And I was like, no, that uh, it was settled right there because the Brewers did their thing with the slide on Sunday with Hoskins and they came back and they threw high at Hoskins. And then that's it. That's the way things are settled. You do something, they do something return fire. And that's the way it's usually settled. But you knew Hoskins was either going to, I put this out on Twitter on Saturday before the game. I said, Hoskins, what inning or what, what, what inning is, when is he going to wear one today? Cause we all knew it was coming and certainly came later in the game when it was six to two that they uh, buzzed one over his, over his head. No, that was an intentional. Okay, that's manager. No, that was that was not intentional. Has anybody ever admitted when they buzz somebody in the head or plug, plunk somebody? Has that ever happened? I don't remember that. Where I say, yeah, I tried throwing at the SOB. I wanted to nail him because he threw at one of our guys or he came up high on with his spikes the other day. That just never happens. Never happens. But Hoskins, 3-4-11, two walks, a home run, two-run double on Saturday. Yelich goes 5-4-11. Encouraged by that. Homered on Friday. Uh, Yelich running the bases. You know, you got your three guy in the order, stealing bases like that. I love it, man. I thought Yelich had a great weekend. Defensive assist out in the outfield from the warning track. I loved it. Willie Adamas, big RBI double today to kind of get the train moving. Four for 12. I think Willie's going to have a much better season than the disappointment he had a year ago. I think one of the reasons why the Brewers are going to be successful here in 2024 is because I think Willie's going to have an, an all-star type year. That's a hot take right there. And I'm sure someone's going to come back after me on Twitter if I'm wrong on that. Something tells me Willie's going to have a big year this year. And if Willie has a big year, the Brewers will have a big year. And if the Brewers don't have a big year and Willie has a big year, Willie will be on somebody else's team in July as will Hoskins. I don't think it's going to get like that, though. Um, uh, Bryce Terang, four stolen bases, five for 11. Stellar defense, as always. Didn't even start at second base on Friday. But still, four stolen bases, great. Again, Terang got off to this terrific start back in 2023, last year. And before you knew it, he was down in the minors trying to work on a few things. But, yeah, encouraged by him. And I saved this one for last. Jackson Churio. From the opening, from his opening at bat on Friday, a four-pitch walk. From his opening at bat, I thought he fit right in. Fit right in. Yeah, is he going to go through his dips and all that? And other teams are going to adjust though to what he does at the plate. But he did a little a bit of everything all weekend long. And I had an RBI, an extra base hit, a couple of nice defensive plays out in right field. Uh, I think we look at Jackson Churio and we see a confident guy out there at 20 years old, guy who fits right in. And we'll see how he is in, in the clubhouse, but I'm sure that's going to be okay as well. But yeah. Uh, Jackson Churio, the early returns after only three games. 
again, only after three games, they may have something here with that long-term contract that they signed Churio to. Now, do I want them to do it for a ton of other prospects they got? No, but that might be a new thing down the road for franchises like the Milwaukee Brewers who cannot go out and hang and bang money-wise with the Yankees and the Mets and the Dodgers of the world. But early returns, like I said, Churio, very good. Oliver Dunn goes two for seven in the series, played third base, RBI single, loved it. Loved his weekend, liked him over at third base. I mean, really, is there anybody to, to be disappointed in this weekend? There were so many people that contributed to these three wins that I think it's just impossible to be disappointed about anybody this weekend. Uh, Will Contreras. I felt like Will, Will had five hits. I felt like he had 10 hits in the series. Will was so good. Good at bats. Um, I like, I, I love him in the two hole. Um, so he was in the everyday lineup all weekend long. Um, and a guy you just can't take out of the lineup. I brought great at bats every time. So Contreras, Churio, Terang, Adamas, Yelich, what Oliver Dunn did. And, you know, that pitching rotation this weekend, that was supposed to be the worrisome part of this team. Held its own this weekend, I thought. We'll get to that coming up next. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Got to turn down the volume and all that with all that shouting that's coming your way. Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. Our show is on there. A program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free on the Amazon Fire Channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're coming right back after this time out here on locked on well you know what i forgot to do one thing forgot to do one thing forgot to tell you about amazon before i before i go to it sorry three games of the season i made a little technical error there but i do got to tell you about fire tv i do have fire tv i mentioned to it a little while ago just watch the games right here in my studio uh i got up the, the fire stick plugged into my it's a screen and it is Fantastic, man. Fantastic. And, you know, you put the TV outside in the summertime. It's your destination for sports. If you like sports. You really love it. You watch sports. Hey, you're going to want to watch the live games and all that on Fire TV. Fire TV. And there's millions of movies on there, too. A lot of cool TV episodes as well. Free live TV, baseball, college basketball tournament. You're going to want to have the Fire TV for this weekend if you're going to be somewhere in your house. Working on something, bring the TV down there, plug the stick into your TV, your smart TV, and you're good to go. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all free, all day long, all night long. Get everything you need on Fire TV channels, let you dive into all the analysis. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're coming right back. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman, your host here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Please get us on Google, Spotify, Apple, on all the major downloads. Go to YouTube, our growing YouTube page. Search Locked On Brewers. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. That alerts you every time we drop an episode. Somebody will say, well, why, why do you mention Google, Spotify? Why I mentioned all the places you can get us because somebody might have just tripped on us and they want to know, how did I get on there? Well, just you know, all those various avenues. Get us on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can get us on the audio version as well on those audio platforms. So, uh, yeah, the, the the pitching rotation, which, yeah, I've been scared to death about that pitching rotation going into the season. Scared to death. But Friday, we talked about this on Friday's show, how great Freddie Peralta was. Freddie was an ace on Friday. Now, we'll see what he does in his next start. He's not uh, – the Brewers have not uh, officially announced their rotation yet for this uh, – I almost spilled my drink there um, – <laughs> The Brewers have not announced their, their rotation for next weekend series against the Royals, but I would guess Friday, Freddie's going to go because they have a day off on Thursday, a day off on Monday, and I would think they're going with a five-man here and Freddie because this week, uh, Thursday and or uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday, uh, Jacob Junis is going to start the home opener. That's a lot of pressure on him to start the opener. And then uh, Joe Ross is going to start the Wednesday afternoon game 
against uh, the Twins. So Junis and Ross are your starters. But Peralta, back to him. Got off track a little bit. Peralta was uh, terrific, and we'll see what he does for an encore when he pitches in that series against the Royals later on this week. Uh, D.L. Hall, uh, in the uh, two-spot in that rotation. Again, we're missing Wade Miley. D.L. Hall went with four innings, got what they needed out of him, and that was, you know, they, he kept them in the ball game. Wasn't great, wasn't bad, did his job, I thought. You know, for a first start, he admitted he had some jitters getting a start. I get it. Starting in the second game of the season against the Mets in New York for a team that wants to contend, there's pressure in any major league ball game. But yeah, he said he felt a little bit of the pressure, but he did fine. And then Colin Ray, I thought today, um, five hits, one run, a uh, five innings. Colin Ray, that's the typical Colin Ray start. Go out there and just bulldog your way through a five hit start. Yeah, that's what we took. And then you had the bullpen ready, of course. And the bullpen, yeah, the bullpen did get a workout this weekend. Uh, Uribe was ready. He he was, before the game on Sunday, Murphy said that Uribe was available because he closed out Friday and Saturday. And then someone asked him, um, are you going to be able to use Uribe today if you need it, Sunday? And he said, oh, yeah. But it was Piamps that closed things out. Piamps closed out the ninth inning. Uh, after Uribe did Friday and Saturday. Uh, and Piams came in on the heels of Brian Hudson. Here's a guy the Brewers picked up who was DFA'd from Los Angeles. Had an ERA over seven in like six different appearances for the Dodgers. Wasn't real good. Tall kid. And man, he was he was cool to watch. You know, I mean, he gives the Brewers another option next to Hobie Milner out there in the bullpen, another left-handed option. But three scoreless innings and two hits for Brian Hudson. I mean, you add Hudson to everybody else in this great bullpen, and he got something there. Again, that's only a first game for Hudson. But, man, I love the way he came in there. Three scoreless innings. Didn't have to go to anybody else. Didn't really get in any trouble. And he mowed everybody down. He was great. A lefty, big lefty up there like that. That was really cool. Um, what was the one down spot for the weekend? Maybe Hobie Milner giving up that three-run home run in the eighth inning. It went from seven to two to seven to five. Yeah, but three-run home run, not too concerned. First pitch home run on Saturday, and the Brewers settled down and ended up winning that game. But I think I liked what Adamas said after the game today. Willie Adamas said, we made a statement here this weekend. We made a statement. Yeah, because you know what? People have been crapping on the Brewers all winter long. People have been downgrading them, um, sliding them all season long. Yeah, they lost Corbin Burns. And Brandon Woodruff is not going to be on this team. And, you know, they've thought about trading a few of their other stars. And they had Devin Williams go on the injured list and Garrett Mitchell. And it was easy to look at these guys and say, man, you know, they're not going to have a very good year. But initially, through three games, through only three games, we, we might have something here. There's some spark, there's some excitement, and there's some fun to watch with this team. I saw it all over Twitter. You all were excited about this weekend. Now, we'll always give pause in a 162-game season. Always we'll do that because you don't know how this is going to end up. Yeah, they might get swept in these two games against the Twins. Who knows? Or you know, the Royals are coming to town next weekend. That's just how baseball is. But initially, from what I saw this weekend with the Milwaukee Brewers and what we all saw this weekend, there's a lot to like about this team. Yeah, the starting pitching, pitching is, will have its days. There's no doubt. Freddie, his first test is a, a, an ace. He passed that. The bullpen looked pretty good. Other than Milner's hiccup and an Uribe, Gave one up to Alonzo on Saturday. But there's so many things to like about the Brewers. And I don't know. I feel like if I, 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 I did bet the Brewers 76 and a half wins over the total. I did do that because I did think 76 and a half was a little, little low in my opinion. So I'm like three wins already there. Now they got to just win 74 more games this year. I think they can do it. 
and I think they can contend. I can uh, let's see how they do Tuesday again. Those those pitchers on Tuesday, Junis is going to start. He's the four man in this rotation against uh, Louis Varlin for the Twins. Chris Paddock goes for the Twins on Wednesday against Joe Ross, and now those two guys will step in the spotlight. And with the Royals coming in town the following week, when uh, we go back to the top of the rotation. So far, so good with the Milwaukee Brewers, man. Let's enjoy this on the day off on Monday and uh, get back at it Tuesday. I'll be on the Bill Michael Show, statewide Bill Michael Show, uh, for those of you in Wisconsin. I'll be on there uh, at noon on Monday talking Brewers baseball. He's doing it from a bar in um, Milwaukee. I'll be on with him for the full hour uh, from noon until 1 o'clock on a statewide network, uh, network um, talking Brewers baseball with you and Bill Michaels. That's going to do it. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. So long, everybody.